let's do a condensed one right now. All right. All right. Let's. We, I kind of have to wrap it up soon. So if you want to just kind of yeah. do like a quick, quick little. We're talking. Uh, did we not cover anything you wanted to cover? I just did not hit the start broadcast button. I've hit it now. I get. I don't know if you got five or ten minutes, Matt. Sure. Matt Weiss. Yeah. All right, buddy. First of all, here it is. I like shopping on my internet device. I like stuff that's been used once or twice. I buy my stuff from a guy who is nice. His name is Matt Weiss, the eBay guy. I gave him five stars out of five. Langdon Boom is the name of his store. I want to go there and shop some more. Hey, Matt Weiss eBay guy, I'm looking for something to buy. What are you selling? I'm selling some really great stuff that I found and or was donated. On Langdon Boom. Check L -A -N -G. out on, on eBay. You know, I, I got to be honest, right now it's not exactly, I don't have some of the top quality merchandise that I'm known for, but I do have a few pretty good items, I think. Some brand new sealed DVDs of some movies that are rare. A couple uh, of rare live, live talks from art lecturers, including, including Karen Finley, if you're familiar with her, the performance artist, the lecture that she gave, rare, um, recorded on. Okay, whoa, 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 Matt, Matt, Matt. All right, buddy. Yeah, well, I already, wondering. I already, already totally screwed this up. All right, and I, 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 and I just, I just want to know. No, it's for real this time. But we're, I know we're tight on time. So first of all, any interest in bags of Reefer Cake Studio Air? Do you want some of those? I mean, you know, it's the, you know, the bag of air from the studio market is really glutted right now. I, I mean, all right, we could try it. But it's, you know, are you donating them to me as an experiment or it's like you want the proceeds? I was trying to go in. I was trying to get a 50-50 deal. Well, Let's move not, on to the that's next. That's not the deal I have with Sam. So if you want to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> What's Sam's deal? What's the percentage, man? It, it, he just donated them to me. It was I was totally and completely exploiting him with no, no, no benefit to right. the publicity. Fine. All right. Come up to Reefer Cake Studios and I'll give oh, you as man. many bags of air as you want free okay right. but if you want the bags of air we're gonna have to split it 50 50 think about it i know people want air they want bags of my air um and i'm sure and you can put out my air is gonna taste <laughs> exactly I, I can do it now matt i'm sorry uh we're tight on time and i screwed up the first session but Relax. let's just get right it's all right it's all right don't rush fuck man we'll get right to it it's it's the fact that me writing my songs, pushing buttons, getting into it, yes, never wanting commentary. In the pot, and I know what Sammy's hot buttons are, and sometimes I push the tiger, the, the tiger too hard, and he bites back. Oh yeah, that tiger will bite. Right, but other times I just poke it, and it's fun. It's like it's like the, you know, it's just good. Last Friday, when you were on the show, Matt White's film guy on Majority Report, buddy, mm -hmm. you didn't like my song, huh? Is that what it is? Uh, it's, it's more fun to make fun of it than to enjoy it. Let's put it that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't know. know. I, I, if you want the, if you want it on the real, saying that herbs are better than words, I mean, it depends on what, what, what for. You know, I don't think so. I think sometimes words are better than herbs for, for some things, and Herbs are better than words for other things, you know. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a neither here nor there statement, in my opinion. But you know, hey, it, it kind of rhymes, so that that had that going for it. It really came off my tongue so nice, dude. Yeah, yeah. herbs were bad. I'm sure at the time, you were feeling like it was the best thing ever, and then you got to go with it. Like we were talking about before, is like you can't be afraid to fail. You gotta gotta listen to your muse and put out what what the genius inside you was saying to put out. You know, I don't I don't want to de deter Fuck you from yeah, doing that, but, you know. It, you, but you made the best point of all that I got to give it to you. As you said, it's a chicken or an egg. So how am I going to get them to get high if I don't talk to them first, right? Yeah, like you can't, you can't convince someone to do mind-altering drugs and expect them to do it right away. Just like okay, otherwise they'd be already doing it. You know, 
In fact, right. this brings so, me up to, uh, I, I, you know, I, I know you want to take it a certain direction, but I just want to tell you as a film guy, I do have a, it, it's occurred to me while we're talking that I have uh, a filmmaker that I want to turn you on to if you don't already know about this filmmaker. And his name is Kabe Zahedi. And he's actually a guy who okay. I've, I've worked with before. He made a movie that I was a producer and an editor on called I Am a Sex Addict. But that's not the one that I, I, I was thinking of. One of his first films is called I Don't Hate Las Vegas Anymore, where he tried to recreate what it was like to go to Las Vegas with his dad when he was a kid by taking his real dad and his real half-brother to Vegas again and to film it. But he was going to just kind of let God decide how the film should go. So he didn't really plan anything, and he just brought them to a hotel room. And basically it wound up, the, essentially the meat of the film became him trying to convince his like 60 year old dad and 17 year old brother to do ecstasy with him so they could like bond. And he, <laughs> he tried so hard to get him to do it. And it's kind of a, a, a working experiment for what you're talking about. I mean, the ecstasy is a little different. I think that is a drug that maybe if you dose people, they would just go like, wow, this is great and not freak out. But I don't know. So I suggest you go try to find that movie. I don't hate Las Vegas anymore. And then when you're done with that and you love his work, he has a move. Uh, he has a TV show on Brick TV, which is the Brooklyn local cable station, uh, called the show about the show, and it's kind of in his self-referential way, the show about him trying to get this Brooklyn TV station to help him make the show. So it's like reenactments and uh, kind of uh, restagings of real people and real people playing themselves. And uh, anyway, nice. his relationship to. His relationship to uh, marijuana it plays a, a central role in it as well, so I think you'll find a lot to enjoy about that show. I think there's five episodes right now. They're about ten minutes each. Oh, fucking right. Hey. The show about the show. If we're going to go this direction, I'll let you, we'll go directions. As I wonder if you are aware of um, these guys. It's a YouTube channel. I'll tweet it to you. Um, and they're, they're the main, uh, they, they just do funny cartoons, right? It's called the O-Chang, or the Tep Tales. The O-Changs are the, the people. But um, I did have them on my podcast a couple years ago, and they're like local celebrities up here in Maine. It's like, they're fucking hilarious. Um, More famous than you? And, yeah, and actually, I got an appearance in their latest video, um, but we they'd have a whole bunch of them, and it just gives you like a lot of Maine sort of... Uh, accents and funniness about Maine redneck sort of thing all right it's something that culturally I don't know I'm curious whether you even think it's funny but people in Maine love it now Matt we're talking about weed we're talking about how uh, we can't just pipe it in and for and get them all stoned because they might get paranoid and then not and it's not going to work. Right, right. We put aside the uh, moral question just to focus on that part of it. Okay. And then if we get them stoned by talking to them, I think then it's going to work for sure. Because you got you got them. So there's all the revise. I'm, I'm not as certain as you. It it goes together, right? Did it you goes together. That? Were you reading me? I'm no, you as, said. You I'm, not, I'm not as certain as you are that it would go well. Okay, that's the debate then. So if we can get more people overall to, to smoke weed or ingest weed, yeah, that's is that going to lead to a candidate? That's the big issue of the day. Right. I mean, the most important thing is how do we change the ship of how people think more uh, people? I, I think, I think what you're getting at is the, more the symptom than the, uh, the cause. The problem is not that they're – not currently marijuana aficionados. I don't. I don't think that's really where the, the problem lies. It, it may just be that they are unwilling to entertain multiple realities or alternate realities to their own, whether it's internal or external. So that's it's a much bigger issue. As, right. as important as important as cannabis legalization is, and and use, and the varieties mm -hmm. of use, and the kinds of use, and the frequency of use is all very important. Uh, I think it's a bigger issue that you're. You're just scratching the surface of when you ask that, what happens if they all yeah. smoke weed? I think, all right, let me push back on that. Go ahead. Um, what I'm thinking is that let's just isolate it to the fact of humans getting together and drinking as a social 
and then then if you threw weed into that. So I'm not saying that I'm going to get the one. My, my experience is if you throw weed into people who have just been drinking, drinking a lot, I'm going to get some yeah. vomiting. <laughs> it's going to help out with the vomiting. I think there's a lot of people who drink, right, who get into that and they're talking with other people who drink and they're reinforcing things, having conversations, they're talking crazy. And uh but if you got them all stoned, I think it's going to open up their conversations. Um, it, it may just put them all to sleep. You know, you never know. They probably all need sleep. Uh, I that's what I hear when I. They, they may all just want to listen to uh, Terrapin Station on eternal repeat. I don't know. <laughs> they might. They might. Uh, weed works better than words. I don't know. It's a. It's not. You. You got me on it. You got to use words and weed. Now, now, just imagine a world where there was no weed at all, maybe. Then there'd be no uh, illegal weed. There'd be no prisons full of people. I don't want, I don't want to imagine that world. That's, a good, <laughs> that's not a good time. Me neither. But I guess I'm just trying to get at this. Like, who, would I, who would I be talking to right now? It'd be weird. It wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. It would just be Jimmy Cake. <laughs> it would just be Jimmy Cake. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd just be some fat guy eating cake. Uh, but I don't know, man. So is there is there was just by the way, is there such a thing as a reefer cake? Yes. Yes, okay. there is. Yeah, I is mean, like, a pot, like a pot brownie, I guess. I've never heard it called that, but you know. You can make a cake too. You can make actually almost anything, right. anything with butter. Yeah, I'll, I'll cook up some cookies. Um, right. So why not Jimmy I, Reefer cookie? I don't know. Well, let me switch. Okay, how about this? Too many syllables. You got it. Reefer cake. That's good. What if it was instead of saying "get them all high"? Um, I'm trying to Are we workshop a different world. What if it was to ha have them all to uh, encourage more sexual relations? Like wow, you're well, you're uh, you're treading on a fine line there, Jimmy. I gotta tell you, <laughs> treading on a fine. I'm line. saying that like like uh, a lot of these policies seem to be fraud and like. The fact that human beings have sex and uh, women are allowed to have sex and stuff like so it's the same idea you know um people going in there saying i want to have planned parenthood i want to have uh you know uh, birth control i think that's great condoms had so i could be singing have them all have sex give them all condoms right so it, it changes Maybe. minds I'm, af I'm afraid you'd be um Convincing people that all of those uh, stereotypes uh, that we saw in Reefer Madness about women smoking pot and going crazy sexually could be true. So, I don't know. Might, be, <laughs> might do more harm than good. I don't know. You'll have to try it. Well, I don't know, man. I do, uh, I do know that, fuck, I just appreciate your time so much. I, I don't I, – I, can we just do it again in the future? Uh, maybe in a few weeks or something, see what what's going on later. But because I know uh, I fucked up the timing here, but we talked about it, right? We hit it. Sure, sure. And this doesn't disappear, right? You can post what we did. We'll post what we did, indeed. Uh, stop just, broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me just. I'll just end with this. I wanted to tell you this. You talked about uh, Sam Cedar, who was the reason why we know each other in the manner that we do. And uh, one of my favorite Sam stories related to your namesake is uh, we were we were working on I don't think I'm telling any tales out of school. Sam has uh, mentioned his uh, use of the magical herb before, and uh, when we first met, I was his assistant on his film A Bad Situationist. And at the rap party, it was like, okay, we're gonna have some drinks and. Actually, one of my jobs was to keep Ross Broccoli, who was one of the actors and also a comedian, um, completely high on <laughs> mushrooms and weed the entire time he was there. That was like his, his stipulation of doing the film. And, and he's a funny guy. He's an interesting guy. He's also the star of Sam's uh, pilot season, the sequel to Who's the Caboose? Right. And um, so we had this weed left over from, from him. And... Sam was just like, well, you could just roll it into some joints for the party. So I said, okay. And I basically took, I guess, I don't know, it was almost a whole eighth of weed and just kind of like bit it up and rolled it into like basically like a Cheech and Chong joint. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like just like, <laughs> a, giant, like a giant bomb that was like almost a whole eighth of weed in, in, in this cone, this giant cone. I was very proud of myself too, you know? 
And I showed it to <laughs> Sam. I'm like, here you go. I did it. He's like, are you out of your fucking mind? He was so <laughs> livid at what, what I had done. With the, the job he'd give me, I had so screwed it up in his mind that I had just made this ridiculously incompetent giant joint. And he can't undo it and parcel it out in smaller packages. But I, I said, you said to roll it into a joint. He said, I, I didn't mean one. God damn. Like, you know, uh, Sam can be when he's really mad. It's funny. Oh, so dude, that's, that's awesome. One of, that's, that's one of my awesome. favorite, favorite stories ever. It's just, to, you know, like you said, you push Sam's button. Sometimes you don't know you're going to. But sometimes it's just fun when you know you're going to. Yeah. And, and that was a, just, he lost it. And I still, to this day, it tickles me just to think of his reaction. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah, man. And I'll, I'll close out with my final thing to say is that, like, it, I like how we're talking about making Sammy mad, people getting mad, and people realizing, having a discussion now with me is that, like, I'm not, you know, I might not be as crazy as you think I am. Um, oh, I don't know, Jimmy. No, no, I, I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy in a, in a way that it makes sense. Well, you, you don't know, know how crazy I think you are, so that's hard to say. <laughs> and so, because it's fun to make Sammy mad, and it, sometimes, like, things with politics, it's very tricky. It's very like it's hard to be a comedian and a, a you know in politics at the same time, and also state your views. And and now and we're in this world tune. where fuck it, and carry a tune, and everybody is fighting with each other, and all I want is for people to unify a little more. And Sammy knows, you know, I'm all about, like, libertarian, Green Party, people of, of various strains understanding, hey, we all agree, we want to legalize weed. We want to do, there's a bunch of other stuff too, but the easy thing to say is legalize weed. Yeah, easy so, for you. Um, it, exactly. I mean, anti-war. There's a whole list of things that, that Hillary Clinton didn't do that could have unified people across various uh, mindsets. And that's when I poked the bear. And I've learned to not get so upset about it because people will be tweeting and getting mad at me and um, even Sammy getting mad at me. But in the end, we're all just friends. We're all trying to work this out together. And I'm opening up the lines of communication. So Matt, Thank you so much for coming on, brother. It's my pleasure, Jimmy. I, I think it's always a healthy thing to have a, a little sense of humor about yourself. That goes for Sam and for me, you know, and uh, just take it as it yes. comes, you know. And I got to laugh at myself. I mean, my, I'm trying to be funny, and, and sometimes people don't like it. I mean, maybe that's more, or part, more even more funny in a way, right? It's just, it's just funny. Um, it, I can't uh, please everybody. But I can try to have fun and have a, having guests like you. You may not uh, be able to please anybody, but that's just life. You know, you got to do what you do anyway. <laughs> I got to please Mrs. Reefer Cake. And so oh, I better uh, just wrap this up and say to you, I can't thank you enough. I hope I didn't uh, – I, I could have you on again sometime because I think we we got a lot of things we could talk about in the future. I will post you're, this you're to gonna, you. You're going to my uh, eBay, right? I will link to your eBay, sir, where right, you can, can find them. That's right, Matt. You know how to, you know how it's done, buddy. That's right. All the hypocrisy podcasts, Matt Weiss. We're out of here. Take care, brother. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye bye. <laughs>